Hello, and this is Sunny. Welcome back. Today I will talk about the math behind DHKE and demonstrate how it works with some simple numbers. First, let me talk about how DHKE works in math. Step 1. Both Alice and Bob agree to choose a prime number P and G. P is a very large prime number in the real implementation. It can be up to 4000 bits long. It's a huge number. G is primitive root modular P. G can be a small integer like 2 or 3 in practice. These two numbers are what they agree upon as their starting point. They are in the public domain and anyone can see them. Then Alice chooses her private key A, whereas A is an integer between 1 and P, bigger than 1 but less than P. Bob chooses his private key B, which is any integer between 1 and P. Both A and B can be very, very large integers in practice. Keep in mind that private keys are kept secret. And this is step one. I must stop here. I want to take several minutes to talk about the number G and how to test if a number G is a valid primitive root modular P. The fact that G is a primitive root modular P must satisfy two conditions. One, G bigger than one but less than P. Two, the modular results must be distinct. The first condition is easy to understand. The second condition will bring many questions. First, you need to understand the modulo operation is simply to get the remainder. Thus, all these remainders must be unique, and there's no duplicate. Let me use a very small numbers to understand the number G. Suppose P is 5, very small number, is a prime number, is 5. Let me test if 2 is a primitive root modular 5. 2 modular 5 is 2, that's the remainder is 2. 2 to the second power is 4, 4 modulo 5 is 4, and 2 to the third power is 8, a modulo 5 is 3, 2 to the fourth power is 16, and 16 modulo 5 is 1. So it simply is just to get the remainder. And you can see even very small numbers are tedious, but you get the idea. Let me test. 2 is a primitive root modular 5. 2 bigger than 1, less than 5. The first condition is met. It's OK. This, the second condition, the modular results, uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, are distinct. Uh, there's, there's no duplicate. Thus, the second condition is met. Both conditions are met, and we can say 2 is a primitive root modular 5. Let me test if 4 is a primitive root modulo 5. 4 modulo 5 is 4. 4 to the second power is 16, and 16 modulo 5 is 1. 4 to the Third power is 16, uh, 64, and 64 modulo 5 is 4. At this point, we can see there's a two duplicate results, 4. 
If we continue, four to the fourth power is two hundred fifty-six, and two hundred fifty-six modulo five is one. Again, the result is the same as the second one. The first condition is is good, but the second condition is not good. Thus, four is not a primitive root of modulo five. You can imagine if p is very very large prime number, there would be a lots lots of primitive roots, but computers can handle the calculations. Let's get back to the step one in the demo. At this step, Alice and Bob agree on their starting numbers, p and g. Both choose their private keys a and b. These four numbers are all we need for the following calculations. Now let's move to step two. At this step, both Alice and Bob generate their public keys using mixing p, g, and their private key. Alice uses p and g. And her private key A to generate her public key. In the same manner, Bob uses P and G and his private key B to generate his public key. Step three: Alice and Bob exchange their public keys. At this step, they exchange their public keys over an insecure communication channel. It's okay since public keys are supposed to be in public. Anyone who intercepts the public keys would find it impossible to get the private keys. Here, one-way a function idea is used. Last step: Alice and Bob create their shared secret key separately. At this step, both Alice and Bob. Use their private keys and their partner's public key to generate shared secret key. The end of the DHKE protocol. Next, let me use a simple example to demonstrate these four steps. Both Alice and、uh, Bob agree upon p is seventeen, is prime number, and g is three. Three is a primitive root of modulo seventeen. Then Alice selects her private key fifteen, and Bob selects his private key thirteen. Step two: Alice and Bob generate their public keys. At this step, both Alice and Bob generate their public keys using mixing P, G, and their private key. So Alice's public key, three to the fifteenth power modulo seventeen, the result is six. Bob's public key is three to the thirteenth power modulo. Seventeen. The result is twelve. Let me use my Windows calculator to demonstrate how I get these numbers. The Windows calculator's default mode is a standard. I need to switch it to scientific mode to calculate、uh, these numbers. Three to the fifteenth power. Click three. Then. Click X to the Y sign, then click fifteen, and click equal sign. I get this big number. Then click modulo sign seventeen, and、um, the result is six. Or I can simply do like this: click three, then click. X to the Y sign, then fifteen, ah,、uh, then modulo sign, seventeen. The result is six. Same thing. Let me calculate Bob's public key, 
3, um, x to the y sine, modular sine, 17, click equal sign, the result is 12. Let me get back to the process and to the step 3. Step 3, Alice and Bob exchange their public keys. Uh, so Alice gets 12 and Bob gets 6. Last step, Alice and Bob create their shared secret key separately. At this step, both Alice and Bob use their private keys and the partner's public keys to generate shared secret key. Secret is 10. The end of Diffie-Hellman key exchange. I hope this video is helpful. Thank you very much and see you next time.